Heavenly Father, we stand before you honoring your word, and we thank you for your word. We thank you that you are taking your word, as is being brought forth, and writing it in our heart, writing it in our mind. Thank you for bringing revelation knowledge. We thank you that we will take hold of it, be doers of it. We will see the fruit of it. We thank you for all that you accomplish this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated, if you would. We've been sharing with you for some time on the subject of the knowledge of God and spiritual knowledge. Today we're going to talk about spiritual understanding, how we obtain spiritual understanding in our life, and that is very important. We must understand that there is a difference between knowledge, understanding, and wisdom in the Word of God. Knowledge is spiritual knowledge that comes from spiritual facts from the Word of God that is revealed by the Holy Spirit, so we get revelation knowledge, and this knowledge then shows us things that we should be doing. The knowledge comes into our mind. Understanding is based on revelation knowledge, and it is to perceive and know how something works, having been a doer of the Word, and this spiritual understanding, as you will see, is imparted into our heart. It is of the heart, and it comes from God. You cannot get it yourself. It's because of you hearing and doing the Word, walking in the knowledge of God, spiritual understanding will be imparted unto you. Wisdom is based on both having knowledge and spiritual understanding. It is where you have, having done the Word, and come to the place of spiritual stand, understanding, and continually walking in it, time after time after time, hearing and doing the Word consistently, you come to the place where you have wisdom, you understand how things work, you know what to do in every situation, you have insight into what needs to be done in, in all, whatever it might be, and you will know how to deal with every situation because you have wisdom from God, having the knowledge and understanding already established in you and having been a doer of the Word consistently. Let's give a practical example from the Word that will just help you to see this. Let's say we talk about the area of deliverance. Deliverance is casting out evil spirits to get free of the bondage of them in our life. First of all, we get knowledge from the Word. And as we hear the Word, we get revelation knowledge of deliverance, how it works, as far as just the basic principles, the fact that we have authority, how the spirits have come into us, how we cast them out, how they come out, and the network of it, and what we're to be doing. So we get knowledge, spiritual knowledge, it's revelation knowledge by the Holy Spirit of the Scriptures and the teaching about it. Secondly, though, we don't have understanding about it until we put it in operation in our life. We gain understanding by how this works by doing the Word and beginning to cast out the spirits, beginning to do the deliverance and starting to see how they come out, starting to see the network of spirits, starting to see the changes that come in our life, also seeing the work of the enemy against us and how he tries to fight against you, of course, and you begin to understand how this works and what's all involved in it because you're doing the Word. You will get spiritual understanding imparted into you as you're doing the Word. Then you come to wisdom. Wisdom from deliverance would be having insight and skill and ability from God, having the knowledge and the spiritual understanding because you've been a hearer and a doer of it consistently to the point where you come to the place and you have wisdom to know what to do in every situation because you have already been operating in deliverance. You already have seen how this works. You have the spiritual understanding. And because you've been doing it consistently and you have seen victory, you've understood how things go, you have wisdom to know what to do in every situation. That's what God wants to bring us to. So we've talked about knowledge. And we're going to go forth further on this. And let's just give you another example for a moment. Let's give an example, let's say, from a natural standpoint that you can identify with. For a job. We get a job. They, it gives us the knowledge of what we're supposed to do. We go through like a course. Well, that's great. We have some knowledge of it. Do you understand how anything works yet? Not until you start doing it. You start doing the work that you're to be doing, and as you're doing that work, you get the understanding of all the things that you're to do, the ins and outs of it, what all is involved in it. And then as you continue to do it, 
of over time, you gain wisdom. You know how to handle any situation. You know how to handle problems that come along. So God wants us to get spiritual knowledge. He wants us to be a doer of the word and meet the conditions necessary to get spiritual understanding, as you will see. And you come to the place of having wisdom. Knowledge is pleasant to the soul, the Bible says, the word in your mind. Understanding and wisdom is of the heart on the inner man on the inside of us. We're going to begin in Isaiah chapter 11. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, speaking of Jesus, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. These are different spirits that will operate in your life to bring forth the spiritual effect, spiritual wisdom, spiritual understanding, spiritual counsel, all of these things. And this is what God wants for us. And he shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. As the, these spirits were operating in Jesus, he was carrying out the ministry that God had for him, and he did everything that God wanted him to do. You're going to be able to do the same thing as these spirits are in operation in your life, and specifically as we're talking today about the spirit, spiritual understanding. We go to... Luke chapter 2. Jesus had to grow in the things of God, if you remember. In fact, we see in verse 52, it speaks of Jesus increasing in wisdom and stature and favor with God and man. And we see how uh, back in verse 40, Speaking of Jesus, how he grew and waxed strong in spirit and filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Jesus had to grow up in the things of God himself. Remember, he didn't operate as God, he operated as a man. And so he had to learn the ways of the Lord just like anybody else. And he got to the place where his learning, where he grew, that he had, because of hearing and doing the word, applying it in his life, he had understanding. And it says in Luke chapter 2, verse 47, this is when he came before the doctors of the law. It says back in verse 46, it came to pass after three days they found him in the temple. His parents were looking for him because he had stayed behind, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. Here, he's 12 years old at this time, and he's conversing with these ones who were the top uh, ones who had knowledge of the law, the doctors. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. Jesus got spiritual understanding because he had gained the knowledge and had been a doer of it, and it was imparted unto him. And this also points out another thing of why you need to get spiritual understanding. Remember, it's beyond knowledge. It's not talking about knowledge. It's talking about spiritual understanding imparted to you because you have been hearing and doing the word. And you'll see many things about it as we talk about it today. Notice, when you have spiritual understanding, you will have the answers. He had understanding and he had the answers. Many people have knowledge, but they really don't have the understanding yet and the answers for what people have today. We need to get the spiritual understanding so then we will have the answers to give to people so that they will know what to do and we can minister to the needs in their life. How are we going to get spiritual understanding? We're going to look at a lot of New Testament scriptures first before we get into Old Testament scriptures that are going to show you many important things. Matthew 15, verse 10. He called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. When he says hear, this wasn't just a nice suggestion. This is an imperative mood verb. The imperative mood is a command in the Greek. He's commanding them to hear. If you're here for the first time, we tell you things and point out a lot of things that are important for you to understand what's being said. The present tense is also important because this is a tense that's important to understand. It means continuous, ongoing action. Otherwise, it would literally be said, be understood, he's commanding them to be continually hearing. That's what God wants for us. He wants you to be continually hearing the Word. Because as you're hearing the Word, what's going to happen? You're going to be able to get revelation knowledge by the Holy Spirit as He reveals this. And the more you're hearing the Word, the more it's coming into you. And it's being written in your heart and written in your mind by the Holy Spirit. But then He also says, and understand. And this also 
happens to be in the present tense, meaning we are to have understanding, spiritual understanding. It's to be ongoing in our life. And it also is an imperative mood, which means it is a command to us. God is commanding every one of us to be continually hearing the Word of God to get revelation knowledge and to be continually having understanding, which means in order to get the spiritual understanding, we have to have done what's necessary to get it. Then we're going to continue in it and walk in it. As you will see, it's possible you could lose the understanding. We don't want to lose the understanding. We don't have to lose it if we do the things that he says. We are to get it and we are to maintain walking in it. Now, again, this is going to come through the Word of God. And part of what can, I can bring understanding can be through the teaching of the Word of God to you, also through the doing of the Word. It all combines together for the spiritual understanding. We see after Jesus was raised from the dead, he was speaking to those that he approached after he was raised from the dead. And in Luke 24, verse 45, the King James says, he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. This is not a good translation. And as you well know, we always point out the errors that are in the translation if there's a problem, and we prove it to you. The word understanding, I put the cursor over it. It is the word noose, as you see below. It means the mind. Literally, it says, he opened their mind. He opened their minds. That they might understand, this is a different word. This is the word for understanding, which is the word Sunni Ami. This means understand. It's been translated understand 24 of the 26 times correctly that it's in the, New, in the King James Version. So, Back here, though, it's a big mistake. Why they translated understanding is beyond me, because 24 times this is used, 21 times translated mind correctly, and three times in error, understanding for some reason. But the, what literally it says, he opened their mind to understand the scriptures, actually. It's not might understand. That would be subjunctive mood, because this is an infinitive. An infinitive is translated to something. So it would be to understand. And because it's present tense, it means that he opened their minds to continually understand the scriptures. Meaning, as God opens your minds, opens your minds up to receive the word of God, and you take hold of it, and then of course you start applying this word in your life, doing it, he will bring you understanding to the scriptures. So God's just going to come through your mind first. You're going to get the word, revelation, and then you're going to do it. And, or you're going, it's going, someone's going to teach you. You can be taught understanding of the scriptures as well through the word. Now there's conditions for getting spiritual understanding that we must understand. In Matthew chapter 13, we see in verse 13, Jesus said, Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing, see not. Hearing, they hear not. Neither do they understand. Even though they heard words or saw things, they still didn't have understanding, because it has to be imparted to you. It is spiritual understanding imparted by the Lord. And what was this? This is the fulfillment of the prophecy. They were supposed to get the understanding, but they did not meet the conditions for it. And this is the prophecy regarding the Israelites. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing you shall hear, and you shall not understand. And seeing you shall see, and you shall not perceive. They would not be able to get this revelation, knowledge, and perceive things. They would not be able to get the spiritual understanding because they didn't meet the conditions. What was their problem? Now he gives the answer. For the people's heart is waxed gross. That means their heart was hard. And their ears were dull of hearing. They, were, they weren't open to hear. They weren't attentive to hearing things. They were dull of hearing. They just couldn't hear because they were not walking in God's ways. And their eyes they have closed. It means they shut their eyes. You shut your eyes, you're not going to see the word. The word's not going to be able to come into you. They closed their eyes. They didn't want to hear. 
these things. They wanted to make their own ways. Remember, they had the traditions of men, the commandments of men, their own ways of doing things instead of following God's ways, which is a mistake. So when you do that, they had a hardened heart. Their hearing, hearing was dull of hearing. They couldn't hear. And they closed up their eyes. They didn't want to hear. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their heart, and should be converted and should heal them. It's very interesting. When we look at these words where it says should see, all these ones, all are subjunctive mood verbs. The subjunctive mood in the Greek expresses things that are conditional statements. They're conditional statements. They're not statements of fact. They're conditional statements based on conditions being met. So it would better be translated that they might see with their eyes if the conditions are met. Same thing with hear about, um, about hear with their ears. Might hear with their ears if the conditions are met. Same with understanding, that they might understand, subjunctive mood again, with their heart, and about being converted, that they might be converted, again, subjunctive mood. And this converted means turn towards, which implies repentance and change in their ways. And then heal them, doesn't mean he's gonna automatically heal him, there's also Conditions on that subjunctive mood. There's five subjunctive moods here showing all these conditional statements. Showing the fact that you and I must meet these conditions. We must have our eyes open and ready and receptive to hear the to receive the word. Our ears open as well to hear. We have to also be ready to, to, take, to hear and to do what's necessary to get the understanding, which is the apply, application of the word and doing it. Uh, at the same time, we're also going to have to be converted, change our ways. We can't be walking in sin and walking in ways contrary to the Word. We've got to correct every problem in our life. And also, we've got to meet the conditions to be healed if we've done all these things. And then we take hold of healing and or cast out the spirits or do what is necessary to get healed, we'll get healed. So it shows us, as the Word is coming to us, we're going to see it, we're going to hear it. We've got to get the understanding in our heart. Notice, the understanding is of the heart. And we got to have the change come in our life. And if we do all these things and meet all the conditions, including for him to heal us, he will produce a healing and a restoration in our life. We see down in verse 19 now, something further about spiritual understanding. This is in the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and we're hearing, what's the kingdom? The rule and the reign of God. When we hear God's word showing us how to rule and reign as we act on God's word through the Jesus Christ as our Lord, we rule and reign. And under, that means it's going to show us how we operate in authority, how we can use our authority and put our faith in operation to conquer enemies, receive promises, overcome situations in life. If we understand it not, if you don't understand it, and this is the word for understanding, and this means if you don't understand it and maintain that understanding, present tense, ongoing effect, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth the way that which was sown in his heart. Who's the wicked one? The devil. The devil it will be after the word that has come into your heart. One of the things we must realize, first of all, notice, the word that you heard got into your heart. Every time you hear the word, it gets into your heart. It's also coming into your mind immediately. The teaching that says that the word doesn't get into your heart immediately is a lie. It is widely taught in the body of Christ, thinking that you have to hear it and hear it and hear it, and finally it'll drop down into your heart. Not true. The word gets into your heart immediately, evidenced by this. When you hear the word, it came into the heart. The devil is after the word, trying to take it out, because that's the power of God that will enable you to have power. It's also what is going to produce the fruit, the promises, the blessings, the things of God in your life, the change in your life. The word in you is how God does everything. It's the word of the covenant that you have in you so God can perform his promises and bring them forth in your life. So the devil is coming here to try to take it out. 
If you don't maintain understanding, spiritual understanding, he will be able to take it out. Many people have not seen victory and changes come because the word's been taken out. Even though they heard it, they may have knowledge of it mentally, but if it's not in your heart, it will not produce the results. Another thing that's important, this word sown in the heart, this is not talking about just at a moment in time that it was sown in the heart, that the devil can come and get it. The reason is because this particular word is a perfect tense verb. And again, we'll explain all these things to you. Don't be overwhelmed initially. We'll teach you all this stuff. But it's essential to understand the word if we don't understand what's being said. The perfect tense is important to understand because that in the Greek is a past tense it is referring to action completed in the past with present effects now at the time of speaking. In other words, something happened in the past and it had obviously an ongoing effect because it has a present effect in your life now. So what this is talking about is that which was sown in your heart, meaning the word was sown in your heart in the past. It stayed in your heart until this particular point in time that it's talking about showing the fact that obviously you must have been doing the Word, you must have had spiritual understanding, you were walking in it, but if you don't continue in walking in it and you don't maintain that spiritual understanding, even that which was sown in the past with ongoing effect and present results, if you turn away from walking in it, the devil can come and take it out of your heart, is what this is saying. This means the fact that it's possible for you to lose the spiritual understanding because you don't have the word in your heart anymore. And why would he be able to get the word out of your heart? Because you don't have it under the spiritual understanding, which means you're obviously have not been hearing and doing the word because you can lose the spiritual understanding that you had if you don't continue in it. And this brings us to another point involving this. This is in the parable of the sower again, and this is talking about the good ground. Remember in the parable of the sower that we've taught, the ground is a type of the heart. The word is sown in your heart. There were the different types of ground where they didn't see the fruit come forth because they didn't do what was necessary. Affliction and pressure came, and the time of temptation, they stood away. The first case, they didn't understand it. He got it out. Another case, it got choked out by, or, or the lusts of this world or the deceitfulness of riches caused the word to be choked and it never brought any fruit in their life. But this is the good seed. How does the word produce fruit in your life? Because you're hearing the word continually. You're hearing this word. You're getting it in you, the present tense again. And you're understanding it continually, meaning you got the spiritual understanding in it and you are continually walking in it, present tense. That's the one that bears the fruit. And he brings forth a hundredfold, some 60, some 30. Fruit, more fruit, and much fruit in your life. This means that the spiritual understanding is necessary for you to bring forth fruit in your life. And it must be maintained in you. Now this brings us to another point. <clears throat> in Romans chapter 1, Verse 21, we speak here of those ones who did not do what was right. Romans 1, 21, because that when they knew God, these are people that knew God, they obviously had a relationship with him, so that would today speak of someone who's received Jesus, they've been born again, they've been in the word, they've been walking in his ways, they had developed a relationship with him, they knew him. They glorified him not as God. You can't be not giving him glory. Neither were they thankful. They were not thankful. What happens if you don't glorify God and you're thankful, not thankful to him? They became vain in their imaginations. And it says their foolish heart was darkened. Not a good translation. I put the cursor over the word foolish. It is the word asunetos. This is a form of the word for understanding which was the, the sunatos. A is a prefix meaning not. This means without understanding. It's the way it should have been translated if it was translated correctly. So their without understanding heart was darkened, 
How did they get it without understanding heart? Because they didn't glorify him as God. They weren't thankful. They became, became vain in their thinking processes. This is a word which refers to the thinking of a man, his, the way he reasons, the way he's functioning. This is why governing your mind is so important. Remember, the mind is written in your heart and written in your mind. And you must have your mind thinking correctly so you do not yield to anything that the enemy would bring in. You've got to take your thoughts captive. You've got to think on good things. It's important that you govern the area of your mind. These guys became vain or empty, foolish, in their way of thinking. This refers to their, their reasoning, what was going on in the area of the mind. And what's going to happen? That's going to get that into your heart because that's one of the gates into your heart. The heart is your inner man on the inside of you. And then what was the result of that? They obviously weren't continuing in walking in the ways of the Word. They were letting all other kind of things come into their mind. They weren't focusing on God, glorifying Him, or thanking Him anymore. They got a, without understanding heart. It was darkened, meaning the light wasn't there anymore. Darkness came in, and when darkness comes in, you lose the understanding. They did not have the understanding any longer. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Oh, they started just thinking that they were wise themselves. Basically, they didn't need God whatsoever. They changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like the corruptible man, to birds, four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Astounding that they would ever think that that would represent God. Wherefore, God gave them up to the uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts. Because now they had a bunch of evil things coming into their heart instead of the word. Lust of their hearts to dishonor their own bodies between them. They changed the truth of God into a lie. Their mind wasn't thinking on the word, obviously, anymore. Now they're thinking on lies. And they worshipped and served the creature more than the creator. Were they living unto the creator anymore? No. They were now living unto themselves. This is how you're going to lose spiritual understanding and go downhill to destruction and see judgments come in your life. This is a guy who is in trouble. He, remember, this person knew God at one time, but they obviously didn't continue in the things of God. And they started just living after their own ways. They weren't following what God told them to do. They changed the truth of God in a lie. They're serving themselves. They're doing these things. And of course, then God gave them up to vile affections. Even their women did change the natural use of that which is against nature. This is how people get into homosexuality because of this perverseness. And the men left the natural use of the woman, burned their lust, as it says. And then verse 10, 28 says, they didn't like to retain God in their knowledge. They didn't want the knowledge of God anymore, the precise, correct knowledge. That means if you start rejecting God's knowledge, what's going to happen? You're, you're going to be without spiritual understanding. And you're going to be going down, down, down. If a person's not in the Word, they're in trouble. Because you need to be continually hearing the Word of God. This is kind of like the guy who knew God. Now he became a Christian in name only, which was zero. He went right down to nothing. In fact, if you do that, God will give you over unto a reprobate mind, which means a not approved, unapproved, not standing the test, mine. And then you'll do those things that says they're not convenient or which are not fit, they're not becoming, they're not right in the sight of the Lord. And what happened to these guys? They were filled with all kinds of evil stuff. Unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, uh, whispers. And then look what it says after. Here it keeps going, backbiters, haters of God. And then we come down to verse 31. Look where they got to. Without understanding. These guys came to the place they had no understanding anymore. They had it at one time. They lost it. Why? Because they didn't walk in the ways of the Word of God. God wants you to make sure that you glorify Him, be thankful to Him. Because of what you've heard in the past and what you have gained in the past doesn't mean it's going to stay with you. You've got to continue in it and walk in it. We come to another scripture that's important to understand. Otherwise, there's going to be conditions for you to have it and maintain it in your life. 
In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 3, Paul is speaking of how he got revelation of all the things that God taught him. How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, the mystery of Christ, all the things that Jesus Christ had accomplished, as I wrote afore in few words. Whereby, when you read, it, King, King James says, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Again, poor translation. We have to point this out to you because you want to see the truth. When I put the cursor over the word understand, if it was understand, it would be this word suniemi, or if it was a noun, it was sunitos, but this is not. This is the word noeo, which means to perceive with the mind, that you may perceive with the mind, not understand. Then we put the cursor over the word knowledge. Knowledge is the word gnosis normally, and here, Instead, it's the word sunesis, which is the word for understanding. So, they got it backwards. Literally, it says, whereby when you read, you may perceive with the mind my understanding in the mystery of Christ. Paul got the understanding, and as you are hearing the word, you're going to first of all perceive it with your mind, meaning you're going to get revelation of it in the mind. You're going to get revelation, knowledge of these things, and this also is telling you another way of he got the understanding because of his time with the Lord. And you'll see many things that bring you to the place of spiritual understanding in a few minutes. And obviously he was walking in the word. He had the spiritual understanding of the mystery of Christ, of what he'd accomplished. And he got it by revelation, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, but now it's revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. God reveals unto you revelation, knowledge, so you can perceive with your mind, so that you then can come to the place, as you put it in operation in your life, and you can come to the place of having spiritual understanding in the mystery of Christ and see his work be accomplished in your life. This brings us to the next point. Ephesians 5, 17. He says, Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. The word unwise, again, is not a good translation. It's the word ephron in the Greek. And ephron really refers to your thinking, your mindset. And this is talking about someone who doesn't have a proper mindset. He's not thinking properly, wrong thinking. Do not have wrong thinking, essentially, without reason, senseless, foolish, wrong thinking. But instead, we're to understand, have the understanding of what the will of the Lord is. Which means your, correct, your thinking has to be corrected in line with the word if you're going to get the spiritual understanding. It means you can't be having all this other false thinking coming into you. If you've got other false teachings, false doctrines, false things that have come into you, traditions of men, commandments of men, things that are false, it's going to stop you from understanding the Word of God. We need the spiritual understanding, but it's going to come from you having proper thinking upon the Word of God. So if you believe false doctrine, your thinking will be hindered, and you will not get the spiritual understanding. You think you got it, but you don't. You, just, you have false thinking. That's why your doc, the doctrine is so important. You'll see it in a moment. One of the things we have to understand is doctrine so we'll have proper thinking. If we don't, we're never going to get to the place of understanding. You're to have understanding of what the will of the Lord is. And the will of the Lord is His Word, all the promises, all the things that He purposes for you, all the things that He wants to bring forth in your life. We can even see this more clearly in this next verse. Colossians 1, verse 9. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge. This is the word that means the precise, correct knowledge. We've got to get the precise, correct knowledge filled with it. That means you've been hearing the word, you've been getting revelation knowledge, you've been studying the word, you've been hearing it. God, the Holy Spirit reveals this to you. Of His will... His will is always in line with the Word. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So now, as you get this knowledge, 
then what's supposed to happen? It's supposed to produce wisdom and spiritual understanding in your life. Again, until we get the proper thinking, pro proper, precise, correct knowledge, we're never going to get to the place of having wisdom and spiritual understanding. And when you have the wisdom and spiritual understanding, having received the precise, correct knowledge, what's going to happen? Then you'll be able to walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. Then you're going to be fruitful in every good work. You'll be increasing in the knowledge of God because you'll be seeking after it continually. You'll be strengthened, empowered, made strong with all power, the word dunamis, according to his glorious power, the power of his glory, the glory of God manifest. You'll be steadfast, is what this means, in the patience, steadfast in the soul. You'll be long-suffering in spirit, and you'll have joyfulness. Why will this all happen? Because you've come to the place of knowledge, spiritual knowledge, spiritual understanding, and spiritual wisdom. So you're going to be walking. This is what is necessary for you to walk worthy of the Lord, to please Him, to be fruitful in every good work, increasing the knowledge of God, as we see, and to be strengthened with all power, manifesting the glory of the power of His glory, literally it says, being steadfast, long-suffering, and joyfulness. This is what God wants for us in our life. Then we come to another scripture. It's quite an important scripture to understand, uh, to know. Colossians 2, 2. That their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the, not acknowledgement, but to the precise, correct knowledge of the mystery of God. Again, you've got to get revelation knowledge first, the precise, correct knowledge of God. But notice when he says the full assurance, this is a word in the Greek which means most certain confidence, even more fully. Full assurance, most certain confidence of what? Of the understanding. What does that tell you? When you get spiritual understanding, you will be at the place of having most certain confidence, full assurance, absolutely, of what God will do for you in your life. Now, why is that? It's not just because you got some knowledge. It's because you have done the Word of God, you have worked it in your life, you've seen the results, which is how you get spiritual understanding imparted to you. you have, you've worked it, just like we said, the guy who learned about deliverance, he didn't know anything about it yet, understanding-wise, until he starts doing it. Then he gains the understanding, he's seeing the results, he understands how it works, how this thing works. So you're going to have the most certain confidence and full assurance when you get spiritual understanding. You've seen this in operation. You know how it works. You have absolute confidence that God will deliver you, heal you, prosper you, bless you, bring the promises, whatever area you might be applying the Word of God. And that's what He wants. So we need to get spiritual understanding. That's going to produce the most certain confidence and full assurance. You'll never, never, when you have spiritual understanding, you should never doubt. You should never wonder. You should never waver. You should never think, well, I don't know if God will do this or not. No, you, that tells me something. You haven't come to spiritual understanding yet. Because if you had spiritual understanding, you'd have most certain confidence. You'd know exactly what God will do. That is what he wants to bring us to. This brings us to the next one. 2 Timothy 2, verse 7. Consider what I say, and the Lord give the understanding in all things. When it says consider, this is this word we've seen before, no A-O, which means to perceive with the mind. How are we able to perceive with the mind? We get revelation knowledge by the Holy Spirit revealing things to us. So we are to perceive with our mind the things that He is saying to us. We get revelation knowledge of these things. And then it says, and the Lord give the understanding in all things. Now, does this mean just because I can perceive with my mind that he's automatically going to give me understanding? No, it looks like it, but that's not so. First of all, the word and, I put the cursor over the word and, it's a poor translation because it's the word gar in the Greek, which means for. You've got to look up every word or you're going, to, you're going to be in a mess. That's why I look up every word and bring this forth. This is because it was written in the Greek, so we've got to see exactly what's said. For or because, beca for or because, 
Ah, so it means if you perceive with the mind, that's going to be preceding because something that the Lord wants to do next. And the reason they say wants to do is because when we put the cursor over the word give, this is not a statement that he's going to automatically do it for you. This is a statement that is in the optative mood. The optative mood is used only some 68 times in the New Testament, and it is expressing his desire or his wish. And remember, we talked about the subjunctive mood that is a conditional statement, but it's what he expects for you to enter into if you meet the conditions. This is once removed from that, in a sense. It means his desire and his wish. He wants it for you, but you're going to have to meet the conditions and do what's necessary to see it come to pass. In other words, the way this would be is that you are to be perceiving with the mind, having revelation knowledge, because the Lord is desiring to give you understanding in all things. And he'll do it if you meet the conditions. Doesn't mean he automatically does it. But this also tells you something. You and I can get spiritual understanding in all things. Don't think you can't. Anybody says, well, we're never going to understand all these things. That's a lying statement from the devil. Well, this says the opposite. God wants you to have spiritual understanding in all things. And we can get it when we meet the conditions. Another scripture we want to look at for a moment, where things aren't translated correctly either, John chapter 5, verse 20. We know that the Son of God has come, he's come, it says, and it's given us an understanding. You think like you got it from him just because you received him. No, that's not talking about that. This is a different word in the Greek. It's the word dianoa, which means a mind, a way of thinking of the mind. A way of thinking of the mind is the way this would be understanding. It's coming from the word noe, but it literally means, when you look up in the lexicons, a way of thinking of the mind. Otherwise, he's given us a way of thinking of the mind so that we can do what? So that we might may know him that's true. Otherwise, through the word, bringing revelation knowledge, and we can think correctly, which is important, so we can do what he says, which will produce us coming to the place of knowing him that's true, and we are in him that's true, even in his son, Jesus Christ, this true God and eternal life. Knowing him is what's essential to come to the place of having eternal life, as we saw when we were talking about out of 1 John previously. So, this is not talking about you got an understanding just because the Son of God has come. That's what it looks like. It doesn't mean that whatsoever. Instead, he's given us a means to a way of thinking when we get the word in us so we can walk in his ways. Now, spiritual understanding, as we said, is not talking about in the mind. It's talking about in the heart. We'll just briefly look at the, some of the scriptures we saw just quickly, and then we'll look at others. Remember Matthew 13, 15? That they should understand with their heart. The heart is the inner man on the inside of you. Remember your spirit, soul, and body. You get a brand new spirit and a brand new heart when you're born again. The heart is the inner man the hidden man of the heart on the inside of you. The soul is made up of your will, your intellect, your emotions, the way you think, the way you choose, the way you reason, the way you feel. And then the, the body, of course, is the house that you live in. Well, we need to get this understanding with the inner man on the inside of us, in our heart. We saw the same thing because we know the word is written, it's sown in the heart. So that's where the word is getting, where we get this understanding in our heart. We also saw it from the Romans 1, 21, the understandings of the heart. This is where they were, had, were lacking without understanding heart. Remember what this says. But the Old Testament also reveals a lot of scriptures that show that understanding is of the heart. Otherwise, we're not talking about a mental thing. We're talking about that which God imparts to you in the heart. Job 38, 36. Who hath put wisdom in the inward parts? Because wisdom is also of the heart. Or who hath given understanding to the heart? That's where it's at. It's in the heart. 
Psalms. This is why you have to have given your heart to the Lord and make your heart yielded unto Him for Him to accomplish what He wants. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, Psalms 49, 3, and the meditation of my heart shall be of understanding. How can I have my heart meditate, meditating on understanding? Because i got understanding in my heart of, the under, of things of understanding as Young brings out more clearer. Otherwise, I'm gonna, in my heart, I'm going to be meditating on the things that I've understood, the spiritual understanding that's been giving, given unto me. In Proverbs chapter 8, verse 5, Oh, you simple, or this, un, or this means, it's not a derogatory term. When it's talking in this way, it's talking about an open-minded person, which is what we're to be. You open-minded person, which is what we're to be, not closed-minded, open-minded, ready to receive the word. Understand wisdom. And then he says, you, you ones who are fools, be of an understanding heart. Again, what does this mean? God wants us to have an understanding heart. What is understanding of? It is of the heart. And how do we get this? There's many things that are involved in it. We'll be looking at it in a moment. But one of the things you've got to realize is you can't make your heart have, an un have spiritual understanding. Job 39, 17. God hath deprived her of wisdom, neither hath he imparted to her understanding. That means that Spiritual understanding is imparted to you. It's been given by God to you. When you meet the conditions, God will give you the spiritual understanding in your heart. And if you don't continue to meet the conditions, you can lose the spiritual understanding of your heart and be given a reprobate mind and be often have no understanding as we saw out of Romans chapter 1. God wants to put this in you. Here's an example of it over in Exodus chapter 31, or 36, verse 1. Then wrought Bezalel and Holiab and every wise-hearted man in whom the Lord put wisdom and understanding, he put it in their heart, to know how to work all manner of work for the service of the sanctuary. When you get wisdom and understanding, you will know how to do things and what to do and to be successful at it, to accomplish things. You will be seeing absolute fruit and blessed in everything that you do for the service of the centuries, sanctuary. Otherwise, what he put in their heart wasn't going to fail. It was going to produce success in them doing the work of the service of the sanctuary. Again, wisdom and understanding is of the heart. Now, let's look for a minute at what things the Scripture says that you and I need to understand. It tells us a lot of things that we need, especially in the Proverbs here, we see several things. Then thou shalt understand the fear of the Lord. You need to understand the fear of the Lord. Because the whole duty of man is to fear God and keep his commandments. By the fear of the Lord you depart from evil. The fear of the Lord's beginning of knowledge is the beginning of wisdom, so you've got to understand the fear of the Lord. That's important. We see in verse 9. Then thou shalt understand righteousness and judgment and equity, which means uprightness, and yea, every good path. We need to understand that. We've got to understand God's righteousness, true righteousness, which most people have not understood. They think they get born again and they're perfectly righteous. <laughs> no, there's a lot to righteousness. It all involves doing the word of righteousness. As well as his judgments, we need to understand his judgments, why they come and why they don't come, or what will, what will cause them and what, uh, what, what the ramifications are. If you're in a situation with judgments coming on you and how you can get out of it, we're going to be talking a series on judgment here coming down the line. Also, uprightness. We need to understand uprightness, uprightness of heart. And every good path, these are things we must know, understand. Proverbs 8, 5. Oh, you simple, understand wisdom. We saw that before. Then also, we need to understand doctrine. As we already pointed out, if we don't understand doctrine and we're believing wrong things, are we ever going to get spiritual understanding? No, because we don't even have true spirit revelation knowledge. Isaiah 28, verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Whom shall we make to understand doctrine? We've got to understand it. 
Notice, those who are weaned from the milk and drawn from the br br breasts, you know. Precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept. That means command upon command. Line upon line, this is rule upon rule. Here a little and there a little, as he brings it out. It really means command upon command and the rule on rule on rule, as he's speaking here. So, that means scripture on scripture, point on point, everything you word the word on all these different areas, little by little, in your life. And those are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast, meaning they're growing up. How do you grow up? By doing the word. You aren't going to stay a spiritual baby any longer. We're all going to grow up hearing and doing the word, and we are going to see ourselves get established in the things of God. And, of course, we're going to get the knowledge of God, and we got to understand doctrine so we're not deceived. And that's important. You see also in Isaiah 29, 24, all, they also that erred in spirit, <coughs> he's talking about what's going to happen for them, they're going to come to, they're going to be corrected, and they're going to repent, shall come to understanding, and they that murmur shall learn doctrine. Otherwise, he's saying these guys that were going the wrong direction, they're going to get, get right, they're going to come to understanding, and they're going to learn doctrine. We have to come to understanding and learn doctrine of the Word of God. Another thing also, we need to under, understand his counsel. If we don't get the counsel of God, we can make all kinds of mistakes. People have made mistakes left and right because they didn't have God's counsel. Micah 4.12 They know not the thoughts of the Lord, neither understand they his counsel. You can be spinning your wheels, walking in the flesh, doing all these things, make all these mistakes throughout your life if you don't get the counsel of God. Or you shall gather them as the sheaves under the floor. We've got to know the thoughts of the Lord and understand his counsel. We already saw this other scripture, but we'll look at it again. We need to understand what the will of the Lord is. People say you never know what God's will is. It's a lie. It says he wants us to understanding the will of the Lord. God will reveal his will to you by the Holy Spirit through the word and by revelation and direct you. The Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you and direct your steps. So we're to understand the will of the Lord. And in order to do these kind of things, we do have to make sure we're hearing the right thing. And this means that's my responsibility here. I got to be doing the right thing. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. I will give you pastors according to my heart. And I saw this long ago. I want to be a pastor according to God's heart, not one that's doing what I want to do. What are they going to do? Which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. What's my responsibility? To feed you with knowledge and understanding. That's why we bring you scripture after scripture, point after point, in-depth teaching on every subject, leaving nothing out. That's my responsibility, because that's what God wants. He wants us all to get the knowledge of God and the understanding. Now, what's going to be necessary then? Let's begin to look at things that are necessary for a little bit for us to get this understanding. We've already seen some things. We saw, first of all, that we're going to have to hear the word continually, as we saw in Matthew 15.10. Remember, hear continually. He's commanded it. And he also commands us to have understanding, so that means God would never command you to have something you, he wouldn't impart to you. So he's expecting you to get a hold of this. Well, so in order to hear the word, of course, what's the first step for everybody? Well, the first step is you've got to get born again. Remember what he said to these guys, because they couldn't even hear his word. They couldn't, they couldn't even get revelation knowledge of anything. John 8, 43, why do you not... No, not understand. It's gnoscope. Why do you not know or learn or know my speech, what I'm saying? Even because you cannot hear my word. Why couldn't they hear the word? This is speaking to the religious people today. Were they born again? No. Who was their spiritual father? The devil. And Jesus told them flat out, you're of your father, the devil. The lust of your father you'll do is a murder from the beginning, abode not in the truth, neither is there no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh his own, he's a liar and the father of it. Of course, they got all bent out of shape on that. It means how do we come out of that? 
We got to be born again. That's why Jesus said, you must be born again. And what does that mean? From above. Again means from above. A spiritual birth that we receive Jesus as personal Lord and Savior. We get a brand new spirit on the inside of us. That is the beginning of your spiritual life and relationship with God. Until you get a brand new spirit and you get a new heart at the same time, you're not going to be able to hear the Word of God and understand and gain any kind of understanding whatsoever. You're not going to get revelation knowledge whatsoever. Another thing that's going to be important, once you're born again and you begin to hear the word, you've got to set your heart to understand this. Daniel chapter 10, verse 12. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou set thine heart to understand and to, the word chasten means to humble, really means to humble yourself or to become low or be bowed down, referring to humility, that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before God. Remember, this is what the angel said to him after he was praying for 21 days and he finally showed up after they got through the, the fighting against the, the principality that was hindering the angel from getting through. And he told him that his words were heard and I'm come for thy words. Well, what was the key not just the fact that he was praying, he set his heart to understand and he was humble before God. If you're going to get spiritual understanding, you've got to set your heart to understand, which means you're going to have priorities in your life. If you don't spend any time in the Word of God, hearing the Word, doing the Word, praying the Word, how has your heart set or even in any means been applied to want to get understanding? It's not. We need to set our heart in order to do the things, means we're going to have our priorities. We're going to be hearing the Word. We're going to be studying the Word. We're going to be doing the Word. We're going to be praying the Word. We're going to be listening to the Holy Spirit. We're going to be doing all these things. And you also, you've got to be humble. God's not going to reveal anything to anybody that's full of pride. Another thing, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 5. Behold, I've taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me that you should do so in the land whether you go to possess. They got taught the word. Keep therefore and do them. What the teaching that comes to you that brings revelation knowledge, you are to keep it, you are to guard it, maintain it, and do it. Be a doer of it. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. How did they get to the, where to get to the place of having wisdom and understanding? Because they were taught the word, they were keeping the word, they were doing the word. You are going to get to the same place of having wisdom and understanding in your life because you hear the word, you're taught the word, you're hearing the word, you're doing the word, you're keeping the word, you're not letting the devil take it out, and you're, you're doing this word, it becomes your lifestyle. That is what ha must happen. People that won't spend time in the word and put it a priority, they won't get spiritual understanding. You think God's just going to give you spiritual understanding in a moment's time because you want it for you now, and then you're not going to follow him and seek after him all the rest of the time and do the word and keep the word and show your heart is totally seeking after him? <laughs> not going to happen. Deuteronomy 28, 32, excuse me, 32, verse 28. Deuteronomy 32, 28. He speaks of a nation here. They're a nation void of counsel. Neither is there any understanding in them. We're supposed to understand counsel and understand, you know, get, get spiritual understanding, and they didn't get it. They didn't have it. They're in trouble. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, they would consider their latter end. If they get counsel, if they get understanding, if they got wisdom, they would, un they would understand what's going to happen to them because they would understand their latter end, which means judgment's going to come upon them because they didn't have the counsel, the understanding, and the wisdom of God. What will happen to you if you don't have the counsel, the wisdom, and the understanding of God? You will end up getting judged in your latter end as well because of not doing what needs to be done. He's lamenting, saying, oh, that they were wise and they understood this. Why haven't they got this counsel and understanding? This is, they ought to consider their latter end because they're not going to get blessed. 
They're going to have all these destructive things. The blessings aren't going to be coming in their life. Another thing, and we saw this before, but bring it up again. If you are going to get spiritual understanding, you cannot have a hard heart. You must have a heart that's yielded to God. <coughs> Mark 8, 17, when Jesus knew it, he said to, said to him, Why reason you because you have no bed, bread? Perceive you not yet, neither understand. Have you your heart yet hardened? Their heart was hardened. You can't have a hardened heart. You've got to have a heart that's right before God. Anybody has a hardened heart, they're getting nowhere with God. They're not going to get any understanding whatsoever. Well, that means you're also, anything in your heart's going to hinder you. You can't have unforgiveness in your heart. You can't have bitterness in your heart. You can't have any evil in your heart. You can't have doubt in your heart. And you also can't have any negative attitudes against God. It's amazing how many people blame God. They get anger at God, resentment at God, bitter at God, because they didn't see things happen in their life. God's never the problem. He always is ready to perform his word. We have to meet the conditions. If something didn't happen, it's not God holding it back. He holds no good thing from those that walk uprightly, remember. Instead, it's the enemy who's able to do it. And or we haven't done what's necessary to see him accomplish it because we didn't meet the conditions of his word for him to accomplish these things. So don't ever blame God. And don't have a bad heart towards God or towards anybody else. It will shut off your spiritual understanding. Or again, remember this is of the heart. In fact, it's interesting in Job. We didn't look at these scriptures before, but we'll look at them for a moment. He's asking the question, where shall wisdom be found? Where is the place of understanding? There's a place of understanding. He asked it again in verse 20. Whence cometh wisdom? See, he didn't know where this is coming from. And where is the place of understanding? Remember, it's imparted to you in your heart. The place of understanding is in your heart. So if your heart's not right, you're going nowhere as far as spiritual understanding. In fact, you'll be without understanding heart, like we saw. Job 32, 8. There was a spirit in man, and the... It says inspiration, but it really means the breath of the Almighty giveth them understanding. In other words, who's the source of understanding? God, the breath of the Almighty that releases His things that come from Him in the Spirit is what is going to give you understanding as you walk in line with the Word of God. Now, if you're going to see this spiritual understanding, we do have to meet these conditions. We need to draw nigh to Him and be in the presence of God. This is why it's important for you to come and to praise and worship God, not only in church, but wherever you might be, ministering unto Him. Look at this. He didn't have revelation of what the situation was. He was thinking about these things that had happened. It was painful for him. He didn't have revelation. He didn't understand what was going on. But look what happened. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I therein. Well, the sanctuary of God is the holy place of God. He got in the presence of God, ministering unto Him. We enter into His gates with thanksgiving, into His courts with praise. God wants you to be a praiser and a worshiper, coming into the presence of God. As you minister to Him, He'll minister back unto you. This is why praise and worship is important. Many Christians, they don't, they don't, they don't, Put a priority on this. This is important in your life. You need to enter in, praising and worshiping Him with all of your being. And, and coming into the presence of God, you'll be in a place of revelation. That's how gifts of the Spirit will start getting operating in your life too. When you come into in the presence of God, and you can start, the Holy Spirit fills you up, and you can start manifesting the gifts of the Holy Spirit, prophecy in these things in your life. Understanding will come in the presence of the Lord. Meaning, you don't get in the presence of the Lord much, uh, you're not going to get much spiritual understanding. You need to be praising and worshiping Him daily and ministering to Him. Psalms 111, verse 10, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do His commandments. That shows you another way of how you're going to get spiritual understanding. 
by doing his commandments. And what commandments are we doing now? The New Testament commandments. We are not under the Old Testament, remember. There's a change of the law, we're under the New Testament. We're now doing the commandments of Jesus Christ. It's a higher law than what the Old Testament was. But we don't follow the Old Testament commandments, we follow the New Testament commandments. All those that do his commandments will have a good understanding. That means in the measure that you're doing the word, God's going to impart spiritual understanding to you. And this is going to be because, not just because, well, I did it today, should I, I'm waiting for it to come right this minute. It's a lifestyle. Your lifestyle should be walking in line with the word and doing the commandments of God consistently in your life. We saw the scripture a little bit earlier, but we'll look at it again so we point out this point. Psalms 49, verse 3. Mouth shall speak of wisdom, and the meditation of my heart shall be of the things of understanding. What are you meditating on? Meditate on the things of understanding, the things that God's revealed to you. Don't think about all these negatives. Don't think about all the things the devil's done or is doing. Don't think about all the heartaches and all the problems and all this stuff and the negatives. That's not going to get you anywhere. You need to think on the Word. You need to think on what He's telling you to do. You need to be focusing on Him in the Word, hearing the Word, doing the Word, thinking on things of understanding. God's going to impart things and show you things and bring revelation to you. Watch that you don't let yourself fall into the pattern of getting negative in your mind. You aren't going to get spiritual understanding. You aren't going to see God. You're waiting for God to do something and you aren't even tuned in with Him. You've got to get tuned in by thinking on His Word and the things of the Lord, especially in your heart. Where's your meditation? What are you meditating on? If you're meditating all these negative things that so-and-so did or whatever, all, you're going nowhere. Get your mind off of that stuff. Get your mind on the right things. Psalms 119, verse, see the devil you tries to use people, situations to try to get you off, get your mind all over the place. No wonder you can't get anything from the, not hearing from the Lord. You got to lock into him. Psalms 119, 99. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. <clears throat> he's, he's, been, he's learned everything the teachers will tell him, and then he's, his testimonies are meditation, and God's imparting more things to him. You should know all the things that are coming forth, and then be advancing in it, as your testimonies are the meditation. I understand more than the ancients, because I keep thy precepts. <clears throat> Otherwise, as you're keeping the word, you're going to understand more and more, even understand people in the past, people that are older, because you are going to learn the things of God, and you're going to, you learn all that they've learned, and you advance in it, advance in the things of God, and you're going to increase in all these things. And of course, how are you going to get all this? Remember, it's all going to be through the word. Psalms 119, 130. The entrance of thy words gives light, and it gives understanding unto the simple. Or the people that are open-minded, it can mean, in a positive sense here. He's understanding. We want to get this. The Word of God is the source. You need to hear the Word of God. You also pray for spiritual understanding. We saw that and see that in the New Testament. And here it says, in the, let me cry, let my cry come near before thee. He's praying. Oh Lord, give me understanding according to thy word. Remember the prayer? Paul's praying, you know, he's praying that you might be filled with this, the precise, correct knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding. He's praying for it. You pray that God will bring and impart this spiritual understanding to you in your life. If you're just waiting for it but not praying for it, there's a mistake. You're to be praying for it. It's part of your demand of what to do you because it's a promise for you and you can take hold of it as you bring the scripture promise to him. Psalms 119.34, Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law, and I, yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Well, that also tells you something. The more you get spiritual understanding because you're hearing the word, doing the word, and walking before, your heart's right before him, you're humble before him, you're ready to do it, you're, you're ready to follow his ways. Notice what will happen. You'll be keeping the law, the law of the New Testament. You'll be observing it with your whole heart. It's going to become your lifestyle. It's going to become your life, the way you think, the way you, your motivation, all the things you do. That's what God wants. That's how you're going to go on to perfection and grow up in all the things of the Lord. Proverbs 2.2. 2. 
so that thou shalt incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. You apply your heart to it. Again, you pray for it. You cry for knowledge. You lift up your voice for understanding. You're praying for it. Chapter 3, verse 1. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. We already saw about doing the commandments. It's going to produce understanding. You need to keep, keep the heart and keep it. And then he tells how it'll produce length of days, long life and peace. It'll add to you. He says, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. You'll find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. The word in you will bring favor. It'll bring good understanding in the sight of God and the sight of man. God will give you spiritual understanding to deal with everything in your life. And you'll have the favor of God. That's why we've got to pay attention to it. Proverbs 4.1, Hear ye children, the destruction of the Father, and attend to no understanding. Where's your attention? Don't let your attention be on video games and your attention on movies or your attention on all these worldly things and all these other pursuits. <laughs> Why should you get anything if your focus is on all these kind of time wasters that are sowing all kinds of garbage in you? Not going to happen. Look what he says in verse 5. What well, he says in verse 4. He taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words. You've got to keep them. Remember, the devil's after the word. If you don't do it, he tries to get it out. Keep my commandments and live. That's your life, isn't it? Get wisdom. Get understanding. He's telling you to get it. Forget it not. Meaning you can let go of it. You could lose it. You could forget it. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Meaning you're going to be speaking. You're going to be speaking things according to knowledge and wisdom. Your mouth should be speaking these things. What's your mouth been speaking? Did it just babble on about all kinds of things? Or is it speaking wisdom and understanding and declaring that? Speaking it to others, speaking it out, praying it, putting it in operation. That's what we want. Forsake her not, she should preserve thee. Love her, she should keep thee. Wisdom's the principal thing. Therefore, with get wisdom and with all thy getting, get understanding. God wants you to get wisdom and understanding in your life. It's mandatory. And if you and I are going to grow up and all go on to perfection and be holy before him, you're going to have to get understanding and wisdom. You'll never get to that place. Proverbs 5.1, 5, 5, 1, My son, attend to my wisdom and bow thine ear to my understanding. Hearing it being taught unto you. We see over in Proverbs 9, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the holy is understanding. Knowledge of the holy, the things that are holy, those are the things you should be pursuing after and wanting to see it come in your life. That produces, that's understanding, because that's where God wants to bring you to. He wants you to become holy. He wants you to walk in his ways so he can give you all the things that he has, including spiritual understanding and wisdom from the Lord. Another thing that's going to be important is you must be correctable. Uh, this was one that stumps a lot of Christians because they, unfortunately, many are not correctable, which is a big mistake. Proverbs 15, 32, He that refuseth instruction... Discipline and chastening. He despises his own soul. But he that heareth reproof and correction gets understanding. If you'll hear and receive the correction that God will bring to you, you'll get understanding. If you keep on kicking it out, you don't want anybody to tell you anything. You don't want to listen to anything. You know, in fact, if you refuse instruction, whether you realize it or not, you despise, you're hating your own soul. <laughs> That's not the way to be. I don't want to hate my soul. I want to love my soul. I don't want to see good things for it. You need to hear the rebuke, the correction, the reproof, the chastisement, so you can get understanding. Otherwise, you've got to receive this so you change and, and get in, come in line with the Word of God so God can give you understanding. That's all tied into the understanding. He's not going to give you understanding if you're going to continue in your rebellious ways and, and you won't be correctable and you won't change and you won't see God accomplish the things he wants. You'll continue spinning in your own life and you're going the same old way, going nowhere. 
You're not going to be progressing in the things of God. It also costs you something. Not financial, but it's going to cost you in your effort, your time, your study, and everything. Proverbs 23, 23. Buy the truth and sell it not. Also, wisdom, instruction, and understanding. You're going to buy wisdom, you're going to buy instruction, you're going to buy understanding. <clears throat> Which means you're going to acquire it, you're going to get it, you're going to possess it. You're going to do whatever is necessary to get this. If you buy something, it costs you something. It takes, what's, going to, what's it going to cost you? Well, it's going to cost you a lot of things. First, you've got to live your life unto Him. You've got to give your heart unto Him. You've got to make the Word first place in your life. You've got to be a hearer and a doer of it. You're going to be a person of prayer. You have to be seeking Him. You have to be correctable. You're going to have to be turning away from these things that aren't right. You're going to have to, you know, walk in His ways. All these things that we've talked about. Be humble before Him, on and on. Otherwise, you're going to have to pay the price to get it. It's not going to come to you just because you want it, and then you're continuing in fleshly, sinful, worldly, you know, carnal ways and all these kind of things. It will not happen. Here's a tremendous promise in Proverbs 28, verse 5. Evil men understand not judgment. They don't understand why these things are happening. <laughs> it's happening because of their sins. But they that seek the Lord understand all things. If you'll seek the Lord... You seek him in the word, you seek him through prayer, you seek him getting his presence, you seek him by just living the lifestyle of walking in line with the word, doing his commandments. All these things are involved in seeking the Lord. Are you seeking the Lord like you should? Are you in the word of God? Do you pray? Do you spend time in his presence? Do you do the things that he wants you to do? If you seek the Lord, you've got a tremendous promise. God will bring understanding in all things to me. There's nothing I can't understand. You believe that. That's all. This is all truth. You need to seek the Lord, though. Well, how do we know we're seeking the Lord? Well, you look at all the things you've been doing. What kind of a track record do you have for the last month of all the things you've been doing? Is the Lord first place? Have you been seeking Him in all the different various ways? In the Word, studying the Word, praying, doing the Word, carrying out, serving Him, ministering for the Lord? All these kind of things. <coughs> Everything. God wants us to get all of these things in us. A couple more scriptures before we close. Daniel, chapter 9, verse 13. As is written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us. That's right, because of the curses, because of the disobedience. Yet made we not our prayer before the Lord our God, that he might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. This is Daniel praying before the Lord, telling him all the, he knew all the bad things that they were doing and why they were in the state that they were in, in captivity. If we would turn from our iniquities and understand the truth, we'd, we'd start doing the truth. We'd come out of this. We do have to turn from our sinful ways. You cannot continue to walk in any kind of unrighteousness or lawlessness or any of these things, sin ways. Sin has no dominion over you. You are commanded to not sin, remember as we saw when we talked about that, and understand the truth. And one last scripture. This is an end time scripture statement in Daniel chapter 12, prophetic book. Many shall be purified and made white and tried. Tried means because it is in a nephal stem. There's, an, there's different stems in the Hebrew verbs. This is the Nafal stem. The Nafal stem means to be refined. Meaning, not just that you've been tried, you've been refined. You've been purified, made holy. You've been made white, you have been refined. That's what they do when they refine metals and so forth. God has done a great work. The wicked will do wickedly, but none of the wicked shall understand. They won't know what's happening when the judgments are coming. And the, but the wise shall understand. They're going to have the understanding. And who are the wise? The ones that have been purified. The ones that have been made white. Walking in righteousness and holiness. The ones that have been refined. God's done the work in them. You and I are to grow up and become refined, white, purified, holy before the Lord. All these things, that's going to produce spiritual understanding in your life. 
And that is what God wants for every one of us. We get knowledge. We've got to meet the conditions now for seeing spiritual understanding come forth. When you do these things, God will impart it to you. Remember, it's of the heart. It's not a mental thing. We're not talking about understanding in your mind or knowing in your mind, so you could use those terms interchangeably. We're talking about understanding in the heart, imparted by God. And remember, that causes you to have a most certain confidence. <laughs> of, you're never going to be in doubt and unbelief when you get a spiritual understanding established in you. God wants this to happen in our life. We've begun this. We've got more to talk about. We'll be talking about the effects of the lack of understanding and the benefits of those and the blessings and all the things that God will bring forth when we talk about this further tonight. Say this, Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you for the Word of God that brings revelation of spiritual understanding and what is necessary to see it come forth in my life. I understand it is of the heart and it is imparted to me when I meet the conditions. I will be a hearer and a doer of the word I've heard so that I see the spiritual understanding be imparted to me and I now know I can understand all things if I will meet the conditions. So I thank you, Father, that as I do your word and meet all your conditions, that I will gain spiritual understanding in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Father, we do thank you and praise you for all that you brought forth. Thank you that we will be hearers and doers of this word. And thank you, Father, that you're going to impart spiritual understanding unto us and that we are going, to, we thought that we couldn't understand all things. We're throwing that lie right out of our minds forever. We're going to understand everything that you have for us. And we thank you for bringing it forth as we're hearers and doers of this word. In Jesus' name, amen.